Hey guys, welcome back to another exciting episode of the Budget 4x4 Live. As you can see, we are installing an auxiliary cooler for today. The one that I'm going with is the PWR cooler because it's a no-brainer. They make the best cooling systems in the world. Every V8 supercar has one on them, so it just makes sense going with this one. Obviously, there's a lot of other options uh, to go for as well that's a bit cheaper. This one is around the $200 mark. Uh, where some on eBay is like 100 bucks, uh, but it's going to be very interesting trying out this one and see how much better it is. Now the reason you want to do this is especially if you're going to be towing, the standard cooler doesn't do a great job, especially if you add bigger tires to your car and you go off-road um, or if you tow. Um, so adding this one is going to make a big difference I reckon and I'll also show you guys what difference it makes. Obviously the best modification to go with is a lock-up kit to lock the converter just so it doesn't continually slip and create heat but yeah I mean the auxiliary cooler is a fraction of the price so I'll probably do this first and then I'll um, you know get into the lockup kit in the future if I need it because I don't really plan on towing something over one ton uh, but if you do tow over one ton I'll probably go for a lockup kit instead uh, but yeah anyway guys let me show you how to install them and um, yeah what difference it makes let's get into it Right guys, so we need to take your front trim off. Um, so this is basically the cooler. Now I've gone with the heavy duty cooler because it is the biggest. And um, yeah, why not try out the biggest one. They do come in different sizes though. So there you go. So heavy duty, the eight cylinder one, six cylinder one, and the standard four cylinder one. Um, so yeah, that is very cool. Now I'll just show you here what are we gonna do. By the way, this thing, if you're wondering, is an overflow bottle. Um, so it used to sit here, you know, the big white one. But the problem is, as you can see, it just rubbed on the pipe when it got hot. And the problem is it just melts through, so then the coolant will drip out. So instead, you can just move it to here. I'll add it to the website if you guys are interested. Um, it's just very handy. So basically, the overflow just goes through there comes through there as well and then into the bottle at the bottom and then you just have to use this bracket here so just like some aluminium it comes with all the brackets and stuff so you only got to buy this long aluminium piece at Bunnings or something and then as you can see it's very sturdy and um, it's in a perfect spot as well because if the trim is on as well there's like an open spot so then you can just easily check it and there's an overflow as well so very very cool and great spot for it but anyway so that is the standard cooler right there as you can see it looks a bit average as well it's probably due for replacement but instead it should be okay I'm just gonna mount it right here so it goes all the way down to the bottom from that one to this one and then back to the transmission then it should be nice and cool right guys so this is what it looks like when the intercooler is off um, so there you can have a better view of what the standard cooler looks like um, and then we're basically just going to place it here now there's normally a cover over there it looks like that so just take that off and then we're basically going to use that hole there and we're going to use that hole now there is a cover around it so we're just going to grind a, a line just so flat bar can go through there what i mean by flat bar this all right so essentially what you want to do is make the hole so it goes through then it's going to sit like that maybe just a bit longer and then you can just fold it so it sits flush i'll show you guys what i mean when i'm done um, but yeah let's quickly do that So here's what I've done, so as you can see that's bolted up, so that's nice and sturdy. I've also relocated the horn and used to sit there and upwards, um, but I don't want to just slap it against the horn all the time. Um, so just relocate it, make it point downwards, and then that one is also now nice and sturdy. So there you go, hopefully you can see it. 
So essentially what you have to do now is just take your cooler and put it there. There you go. So essentially what it's going to sit like is something like that there. So there you go. And then just mark holes with like a sharpie or something. And then you can just bolt it to it. So yeah, I'll show you what it looks like. Also make sure to fill it up. So I've got the ATF FS auto transmission fluid. Some use the DX3, so just confirm with the Repco so cheap auto. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fill it up and then I'm just gonna close it again with these um stoppers there. So in that way it's already filled and you don't have to fill it by the gearbox or the dipstick. So yeah. Let's now put it up and um I'll show you what it looks like. Awesome guys, so there you go. That is all mounted up. As you can see, it's nice and sturdy. And there is a bracket down the bottom as well, holding it in place. And then obviously all these ones. So yeah, came out really well. Now what we want to do is connect the old cooler up to the new one. So what you want to do, so that is in, that is out. So what I'm going to do is to attach that one and connect it up to that point there. Uh, and then I'm going to use this long hose. It does come with clamps as well in the kit. Just going to make it go from there to there. So in that way, it goes in, cycles through that one. Then it goes to this one, cycles through this one. The fan is behind it as well. So if that's on, it's going to draw even more air through it. And then it's going to exit down there back to the gearbox. So yeah, it should be nice and cool. So let's connect it up and I'll show you the end result. So that is now all complete. So as you can see, um, that one there goes down all the way into there. So it's gonna cycle through this cooler and then it's gonna go out by that hose over there. So yeah, very happy and it sits really nice. As you can see, it all looks factory. So I'm very happy about that. Um, but yeah guys, now I just gotta put everything back together and then yeah, I guess we can go for a ride. Just by the way, you'll definitely need to top up your um, transmission fluid because this line here, all the way to there, is not filled with fluid. So yeah, definitely got to put a fair bit more in. Only takes about a litre. Uh, so just grab yourself one of those and um, yeah, all good to go. Awesome guys, well there you go. That is now all fitted up. It looks very nice and neat, so I'm very stoked about it. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to go for a drive just yet um, because I reckon I'll need a few drives just to give you an accurate, um, you know, answer of whether it actually helped with the temps or not. So I'm going to go out, test a few different terrains, so up steep mountains, off road, that sort of thing, and see if it actually helps. Um, so I'll still put it in this video just after I'm done talking to you right now. Um, but yeah, guys, if you want to grab it, make sure to jump online, budget 4 by 4 lifecom I'll make the kit available to you. I mean, the only extra things that you'll need is some aluminium flat bar that you can bend, um, and also some screws, spring washers, and washers, um, just small pack just so you can actually bolt it on. And so that's all you need. If you're interested in the coolant overflow bottle as well, I'll make that available too, in case some of you want it, and for those of you that have front mount intercoolers. But yeah, I'm very stoked. Hopefully it makes a difference. Um, but yeah, I guess you guys are about to find out. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.